Now that we discussed how our immune system actually works, let's discuss the types of blood groups or blood types found in humans and then let's briefly discuss the process of blood transfusion. Now humans contain four different types of blood groups. So we have blood type A, blood type B, blood type AB or blood type O. Now the first question is what exactly determines the difference between these different blood types and more specifically what determines the blood type of any given individual because any given individual can only have one of these four different types of blood groups. Now it turns out that on chromosome 9 of our karyotype, we basically have the allele, the gene that codes for a special protein membrane that is found on red blood cells. So each human inside our DNA, we have a gene that codes for this protein. Now before the protein is actually attached onto the membrane of red blood cells, it is modified in the Golgi apparatus and a carbohydrate attachment is made onto that protein to form a glycoprotein. And this glycoprotein then is transferred onto the membrane of red blood cells and it's the terminal sugar on that glycoprotein that determines the type of blood group or a blood type that our individual actually has. So basically, let's take a look at the following diagram to see exactly what we mean. So we have the phospholipid bilayer of the red blood cell. This is our cytoplasm portion, and this is the extracellular matrix. So this is the protein component of the glycoprotein, and these purple extensions are the sugar components. And it's the terminal sugar of that glycoprotein that determines the type of blood type or blood group that our individual has. Now, these glycoproteins are also sometimes known as self-antigens or simply antigens, as we'll see in just a moment, and we'll see why that's the case. It has to do with our immune system. Now, there are two different types of glycoproteins, so there are two different types of antigens. One of them we call antigen A or glycoprotein A, and the other one we call antigen B or glycoprotein B. And it's the presence or absence of these glycoproteins that determines and differentiates these blood groups from one another. For example, blood type A means our red blood cells contain antigen A and not antigen B. Blood type B means our red blood cell membrane contains antigen B but not antigen A. Blood type AB means our red blood cells contain both antigen A and antigen B. And finally, blood type O means we have neither antigen A or antigen B on the red blood cell of our red, uh, the membrane of our red blood cell. Now, the next question is, what exactly is the big deal? And what's the relationship between these groups and our immune system? Well, let's begin with blood type A. So in an individual that has blood type A, what that means is on chromosome 9 of that individual, they have a gene that codes for antigen A. And that means all the red blood cells will contain this particular glycoprotein, antigen A. Now, the immune system, because these are self-antigens, that means the immune system will not produce any antibodies against the antigen A glycoprotein, but because the red blood cells of blood type A individual do not have antigen B proteins, what that means, our immune system will begin producing antibodies against that particular antigen B. And so if that individual with blood type A ever receives blood type B, for example, the red blood cells of the blood type B individual will be destroyed as a result of the presence of those antibodies against antigen B. And we'll see exactly what that means in just a moment. 
So this is our red blood cell of a person that has blood type A. So blood type A individual contains red blood cells that contain a membrane protein we call antigen A. And so that individual will not produce antigen, uh, antigen A antibodies. They will only produce antigen B antibodies because they do not have any antigen B proteins on the membrane. On the other hand, let's focus on the blood type B. So if an individual has blood type B, that means they have a gene that codes for antigen B and all the red blood cells will contain membrane bound antigen B glycoproteins as shown in green. And so this will be the self antigen. And what that means is our immune system will not produce any antibodies against this antigen B, but now will produce antibodies against antigen A because it doesn't have any antigen A on that protein. So this is blood type A and this is blood type B. Blood type A contains antigen A and antibodies against antigen B, while blood type B contains our membrane bound antigen B and so contains antibodies against antigen A. Now, the next question is, how exactly do we pass down these blood groups from one individual to our offspring? So basically, each parent has the ability to donate a gene for that particular blood group that they actually have. So let's suppose this is the male parent chromosome, this is the female parent chromosome, and this is chromosome 9 for each case because this is the alley, the gene section that codes for a particular type of blood group. So this is the blood type allele. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the ABO blood group locus is located on the chromosome number nine and each allele is passed down from each one of the two parents. Now, as it turns out, the blood type is a codominant train, a, a codominant trait. And what that basically means is, if one parent gives an antigen A gene, while the other parent gives an antigen B gene, they will both be expressed on that red blood cells membrane. And what that means is, if this is A and this is B, when they combine, they will form the AB blood type group. And what that means is, the red blood cells will have both of these antigens attached onto the membrane of the red blood cell and this is what we call blood type AB and because in this individual the red blood cell membrane contains both of these antigen types our immune system will not produce antibodies against both of these types and that's because the immune system will see antigen A and antigen B as self antigen so these individuals with blood blood type AB do not have antibodies for either antigen A or antigen B. Now it is also possible that our individual doesn't have this gene on chromosome 9 and that means if it doesn't have that gene it cannot actually express and produce any one of these antigens and in such a case if the male parent doesn't have that gene and the female parent doesn't have that gene and they essentially mate, they will produce an offspring, an individual in which we basically have neither antigen A nor antigen B on the membrane of that red blood cell and in that case our immune system will produce both antibodies against antigen A and against antigen B and this is what we call a blood type O. So such an individual lacks both antigens and their red blood cells on their red blood cells and so the immune system produces antibodies against antigen A as well as against antigen B. So now that we discussed the four different types of blood types, 
blood groups, let's discuss the process of blood transfusion. So it is actually possible to transfer blood from one individual to a different individual. However, one must keep in mind that certain blood types cannot be mixed. And that's because if they are mixed, they will agglutinate. And what that means is antibodies will combine with their complementary antigens and they will basically clump together and the blood will be rejected during that transfusion process. So this is because people carry antibodies for antigens they don't have. And so mixing red blood cells that have particular antigens with complementary antibodies will cause them to stick together, causing the process of agglutination. So to see exactly what we mean, let's take a look at the following table, which basically describes which blood types we can mix and which blood types we cannot mix. So on this table, this row, the red, lo uh, the red row, basically describes the blood of that individual that we are donating while this column the blue column basically describes the blood of that individual that is receiving that donating blood. So this is our receiver, it's the recipient and this is the person that is donating that blood. Now, yes means that by mixing these two blood types, we basically do not have agglutination taking place and so mixing is allowed. But no means that we cannot mix these two blood types because agglutination will take place. An antibody will bind to an antigen, clumping will take place and so our blood will be rejected. So let's begin with A. Let's suppose our individual that is receiving that blood has blood type A and what that means is it contains antigen A on the red blood cells and it produces antibodies against antigen B and so what that means is if a person, if the donating person has the same blood type A, then that means that person also has these red blood cells with the same type of antigen A. And so when we mix these two bloods, they will readily mix and no agglutination actually takes place. Now, what about if we mix, if we donate blood from blood type B? Well, blood type B contains antigen B and forms antibodies against antigen A. And by mixing our B and A, we basically have the process of agglutination taking place. The antibodies, antibodies against antigen B in the receiver will attack the red blood cells that basically come from this donating person that has blood type B. Now, what about AB? Well, AB is the same exact case. On AB red blood cells, we have both antigen A and antigen B, and since this produces antigen B, uh, antibody B, the antibody B will bind onto AB red blood cells, destroying those red blood cells, forming this agglutination process, and so this and this is not allowed. But if we take an O individual and we donate blood from the O individual to an A because the O individual doesn't have either antigen A or antigen B, what that means is the antibody against antigen B that this individual blood type A has will not be able to bind to the red blood cells of type O person and so this process of mixing will take place. Now, notice one important point about blood type O. If we examine this entire column, we have yes all the way down. And what that means is this is the universal donor. A person with blood type O can donate to any individual, and that's because their red blood cells have neither antigen A nor antigen B, and any antibody against A or B will not be able to bind to these red blood cells. And so 
we can easily donate type O blood to either one of these four red uh, uh, blood types. On the other hand, this O cannot actually receive any blood unless it's type O. And that's because if let's say our person has type O red blood cells, that means they produce both antibodies against antigen A and antigen B. And by donating A, B, or A, B to this person with blood type O, that means the blood type O person will have antibodies that will kill off all these different red blood cells, A, B, and A, B. And only this one, the blood type O donator, will not have the red blood cells with either of these antigens, and so the antibodies will not affect that person. So you can examine this table in more detail to basically convince yourself that this transfusion system actually works. Now, the final thing I'd like to briefly talk about is the type of genotypes that form the different types of blood types. So let's take a look at this table here. So this column describes our blood types, so A, B, A, B, and O. And this describes the potential genotype that we must have to basically form these types of blood types. So let's begin with blood type A. So if our male parent has the A blood, and if the female has the A blood, they will mix, they will produce blood type A. Now, if the male has, let's say, the blood type A, and the female lacks either one of those traits, either one of those codes, what that means is we'll have IA and lowercase IO. And what that means is we'll still form blood type A because the offspring will have the gene from the male parent that will create that protein antigen A. Now, the same thing is true for blood type B. IB and IB forms blood type B 